Hello everybody, this is D.A. Chandekar, editor of Steel World, and we are having a special session of face-to-face -face with Dr. Rajiv Paul, Director, National Institute of Secondary Steel Technology. Mr. Rajiv Paul has got rich experience of 32 years, uh, and he has spent a lot of years in the international organizations like ArcelorMittal, Bar & Steel, but starting with SR Steel Limited India. I welcome Mr. Rajiv Paul to this exclusive interview of Face to Face. We will be talking with Mr. Rajiv Paul on technology issues facing the iron and steel industry in the country. Welcome Mr. Paul to this show. Welcome. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, sir, my first question to you is, what are the latest technology trends in the steel production and processing technology in the country? Actually, now the latest trend in the steel processing technology remains the same. Uh, basically, steel processing technology like the blast furnace, like the DRI, coal based, as well as the gas based, as well as the steel making, the BOF and electric arc furnace and induction furnace, they remain the same. But mm -hmm. additionally, what is happening is that the best available technologies of energy saving like TRT, huh. like uh, uh, if you want to rack, uh, like uh, coal dry quenching, coke dry quenching, that CDQ, and other additional paraphernalia are being added so mm -hmm. that the consumption goes down. And uh, people are all concerned about the much more about the energy as well as the what you call the fuel consumption. And they are also concerned about what you call the cost. So all these things go down. If you add and uh, add on to this or to all these all, all these facilities, so these facilities are uh, and also people are looking for a blastness of higher capacity, where you have a, a lesser energy consumption. You have much more uh, what you call uh, PCI, what you call pulverized coal injection. People are looking for hydrogen in injection into the blast furnace, natural gas injection in the blast furnace. These are the latest trend which is now coming up. Also, the hydrogen-based uh, DRI technology is now uh, across the world. People are trying their level best to introduce and to make it into make it much more cost effective. And mm -hmm. also, uh, most of the companies are looking forward how to make a uh, uh, produce hydrogen at a lesser cost. These are the technology trends which is now people are, uh, people are looking forward to. And one of the most important thing, you know, like uh, if you compare blastness of and uh, the direct uh, DRI plants, gas based or coal based, the uh, DRI gas based and coal based, the reduction takes place at a lower temperature, 900, 950. That is the temperature where the actual reduction takes place. But the blast uh, the reduction temperature is much higher. When oh. you do it at a much higher temperature, the loss energy losses are higher. So uh, the all companies and governments are looking forward to a, a, a reduction technology which is more near to direct uh, mid racks, HYL, and all those technologies. And coal-based technology, people want to gasify the coal and then re reduce the iron ore instead of the coal-based technologies. These are the latest trend what we see today. This is yes, my... Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. See, sir, mm -hmm. everybody globally, I think the, the, there, is a, there is a conscious effort to reduce the carbon footprint. And yeah. which, is, which can be also called as green steel making. So uh, actually, I, I think a lot of experiments are being conducted and a lot of research is being done in the country also. So can you give an account what what sort of research and what what we are doing on this in this direction, sir? See, uh, uh, our our government is taking a lead role now. In uh, they have formed uh, 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 many task forces on uh, how to name it, what you call it, taxonomy, and how to uh, how to monitor it. How the, uh, if you don't monitor and uh, do an accounting of CO two emission for mm -hmm. each and every process then you don't know, you cannot compare the processes. So government has taken a lead role to do this and he has, they have formed various committees of eminent personalities who are working on it at the moment to find out ways and means. 
like all uh, the, uh, there are what you call uh, uh, world steel association uh, scope 1 yeah, scope yeah. Two, scope 3 and how it uh, and how we can also uh, have a uh, have a, a indigenized uh, version of it and also like uh, 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 we want to also see see in this way if you uh, until it is, uh, until it, uh, uh, it is measurable if it okay. is not measurable you cannot compare the processes mm -hmm. So we want to make it measurable, and then we want to compare it, and then we want to do uh, R and D also, and we want to do financing. How to finance this particular? See, uh, if you want to go out of your way and want to reduce the carbon footprint, there is a also a uh, what you call financial implication. So the government is looking how to do uh, how to uh, uh, move about it. And on the other hand, if you see the European market. There's a CBAM now uh, uh, will be effective, I think, uh, from October. They want to do the what you call accounting on uh, the whatever steel is being imported to European Union. The CBAM, the carbon, uh, see, see, uh, 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 that carbon, carbon border uh, uh, adjustment. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. In it, we are measuring ways and then they will be uh, they will be accounting it and then they will be formulating ways and means how to how to stop which is uh, emitting much more co2 so india in general maybe uh, will be affected by that but then we have to also formulate our own policy our government policy and to see how we can also reduce carbon footprint as as a, as a, a global partner with them mm -hmm. also we want to also don't want to be a victim also we mm -hmm. also want to play, play a positive role here that mm -hmm. is the way what we see here so mm -hmm. this is what i and on the rnd front uh, the if you see the present day coal based uh, dri process mm -hmm. you know it, it's a horizontal kill mm -hmm. there is no counter current movement of the reducing reductant and the raw material so we want to make it little bit at least to a vertical sort of uh, furnace so that the energy consumption goes down as well as the effectiveness of the kiln goes up. You know, in a midrex uh, or a uh, H-Y-L process, the effectiveness of reduction is very high. So in, at a, uh, at a, at a, if you see the land footprint, what you call the area, mm -hmm. uh, area per, uh, per area, the, uh, what you call, there is more reduction of iron ore than a uh, horizontal kiln. So people, we are looking forward to an R and D project to, uh, on that particular front. Yeah, yeah, actually, I understand, sir. Yourself and NIST are important members of this the committee which uh, which Ministry yes. of Steel has formed, and yes, yes. a lot of research is being conducted uh, at your place also at Mandi Govindgarh, maybe at uh, National Metallurgical Laboratories in Jamshedpur and many places. So, uh, sir, can you give an account of what what is the current uh, activity profile of NIST? Because NIST is now spearheading the uh, research in the area of secondary steel technology. So uh, we would like to hear from you what what activity uh, are being what activities are being conducted at NIST. NIST actually uh, we are doing much more of what you call in general consulting. The consulting mm -hmm. uh, the you may say the consulting you know, not only in areas of uh, what you call uh, uh, expansion projects of steel plants. Mm. Uh, apart from that, we are helping companies to reduce their energy consumption by energy efficiency. Also, we are doing energy audits and mm. we are also part of the uh, B program of, uh, we are accredited energy auditors of uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Okay, Actually, okay. Uh, we are partnered with Bureau of Energy Efficiency in uh, different committees. Mm. Mm. And uh, we help uh, them in the uh, PAT uh, PAT scheme that perform achieve a trade scheme of uh, mm -hmm. what PE. Uh, now they uh, be may may and um, be with in conjunction with Ministry of Steel will come mm -hmm. off uh, come out with a particular scheme where uh, energy efficiency along with uh, uh, what you call carbon footprint will be the prime mm -hmm. objective. The okay. uh, PAT is on oil equivalent basis. Mm -hmm. uh, so this will be on the basis of carbon footprint. How much CO2 you emit per ton of ton of steel produced and mm -hmm. different areas. We are also looking forward to like the what the iron ore which is coming. If uh, what is the car, uh, carbon footprint it has left behind. 
Mm. What is the coal uh, during mining it has left behind? We'll also uh, try to uh, formulate a policy and see how we can encompass all these things and come out with a particular uh, philosophy of accounting. So we'll be working, we are working with B as well as we do, we will be actively participating. We, we don't have any baseline data at the moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, with, the, uh, with B, we uh, will be uh, formulating a baseline data for, for the country. And on that basis, that on that base baseline data, we uh, our country uh, our country will be able to uh, formulate certain uh, philosophy and see if uh, we, we at the moment we don't know it is uh, 2.2 or 2.1 or 2.5 or 2.8 uh, mm -hmm. uh, tons of CO2 per ton of carbon uh, per, per ton of steel produced. At the moment, there if you ask any of the companies, they will give you a figure. But how they have arrived at that figure, the ba uh, the the basis and how they have calculated, mm -hmm. uh, 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 everybody is not even the uh, major steel companies. We are not very sure. So okay. the government has to show the way, and on that basis, the major players and the secondary steel uh, producer will be working on it, and we will uh, uh, necessarily look forward a reduction in the of the car carbon footprint in the country see the carbon footprint is not just the carbon footprint it will also reduce the cost and That's also true. yes yes also on the other hand uh, if there is a necessity of small investment here and there they are supposed to do it or we will uh, show them the way how to finance it this is our at the moment uh, we are looking yeah, for yeah, yeah. And uh, I think, sir, you have offices in uh, other places also in the country, like you have office in Nagpur. And uh, apart from that, I think uh, uh, Mumbai also, IIT Mumbai, you are managing uh, the center of those, excellence. Those are the center of excellences. But at the moment, we are uh, not having any office. We are based out of Mandi Govindgarh and working out of Delhi at the moment. Huh. You have some outfit in Nagpur as well, right? Nagpur, we had it, but now we are not working out of Nagpur at all. Okay, 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 okay. So <laughs> we uh, are, we are working from Delhi and we are working from Mandi Govindgarh. Okay. So this is, and and there is no the necessity of people to be placed everywhere. Wherever we want, we can go there. Yeah, obviously, in today's digitalized world, I think uh, we should be only present. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are, we are making our st uh, team stronger. And we are inducting much more younger blood into our organization, yeah. and the and we uh, our uh, what do you call our honorable minister has also looked into our uh, activities, and he also wants us to be become stronger and mm -hmm. strengthen uh, the the organization. It will strengthen the ministry as well, and as well as the steel whole steel sector, the secondary steel sector primarily. So yeah, that is what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a strong research will always, uh, you know, strong. make steps for the future. So, yes, yes. And uh, I have a lot of verticals actually. We do, uh, we are doing R and D. We are doing, uh, we are doing consulted surveys. We are doing. We yeah. are also into the safety because uh, the safety is very much neglected area in uh, the secondary steel sector, especially. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So we are uh, also looking forward to the safety area. And we are also basically, uh, we are also this, uh, um, uh, basically the safety, who looks after the safety in each and every state. So we have, uh, uh, we are, um, our ministry is, uh, wants us to to spread across on the safety front. Okay, that's, that's great. Sir, uh, safety is a very important issue as such. And as you rightly said, it is quite neglected. It was quite neglected in the, so the big manufacturing sector like steel. So it's a very good thing that you have taken it up and now safety will be, a, you know, it will be dealt with. Uh, sir, yes. what major technological changes you see in the future? What is coming up like? You see yeah. hydrogen-based steel making is coming up in near future or some uh, big uh, technology? Hydrogen-based uh, technology will surely come up at a, a particular point of time. But mm -hmm. at the moment, hydrogen is very a uh, bit costly, and when, yeah. when uh, even the hydrogen is available, the uh, uh, companies won't be willing to serve the steel sector first. They will serve the other sectors first. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, actually, uh, our uh, if we get an infrastructure uh, status in the country, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, the hydrogen will be pro provided to us at a faster pace, basically. Okay. But on the other hand, uh, hydrogen, I think. Uh, 
next 5 6 years it will uh, the the production technology will uh, uh, hydrogen will mature see mm-hmm. until like, the production technology of hydrogen matures and the availability of hydrogen is there then only the steel making will take a hydrogen see the steel makers are not looking forward to hydrogen making technologies mm-hmm. hydrogen technology another business so hydrogen whenever hydrogen uh, is available then uh, the uh, the steel uh, uh, producers will take into account the hydrogen so yeah. that's what and now i think we all will concentrate on reducing cost and reducing car- carbon footprint at the moment with all best available technologies across the world which they scrap preheating they will also all will, are fond of take, uh, consuming scrap and yeah, avoiding yeah. the making process scrap mm-hmm. goes in making process directly so and the carbon footprint is very low so here this if the if you have the scrap preheating then your carbon footprint, I think, will come down to 0.5, 0.6 ton oh. per uh, steel produced. So, yes. and less uh, amount of scrap available in the country, but uh, slowly the circular economy will uh, take into shape in our country. It will mature also, that's what I will see. More and more scrap will be available. Yes, yes. But it takes time, basically. You know, we'll, we are, we, uh, uh, means, uh, till the time we became a, become a developed economy, See, mm-hmm. we have come a long way and mm-hmm. uh, we have sped up uh, our uh, development. But uh, it, it will take uh, a bit more time to uh, mm-hmm. do all those things and hydrogen coming into the uh, steel making process. Yeah, I, I think, in fact, the new scrappage policy will also help us to go in that, in that direction. Yes. Yes. Because no, all vehicles will be available for scrapping and, uh, you know, that will generate more scrap, isn't it? Mm. That's, that's yeah here yeah, here also Tata Steel is uh, uh, putting up a what do you call uh, they have put up a, a scrapping unit as well as they are putting up a scrap melting unit in Ludhiana you know mm-hmm. so that will bring down the overall uh, carbon foot, footprint of Tata Steel see mm-hmm. so the are all doing that and uh, Sale is also looking forward to their consumption of uh, scrap, uh, uh, they want to increase this consumption of scrap. So, all major uh, uh, steel players are doing it. So, scrap it will be a scarce commodity. So, mm-hmm. how to get the scrap, how to, we have need to have a good scrap policy. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. only the in, in, internal scrap, we need to import scrap as well. See, yeah, so, yeah. And I, I find another important thing, the, the uh, scrap uh, prices won't shoot up worldwide immediately you know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it cannot uh, the uh, uh, price of scrap cannot go up uh, above the price of rebars what you call tmt yeah definitely definitely not definitely, definitely. So it cannot go up so it there is a gap of about 80 to 100 dollars in between yeah, that mm-hmm. is the conversion cost dot uh, uh-huh. so uh, they, they all people who was ever buy scrap they will convert it and make it into rebars across yeah, the world uh, so yes. but uh, scrap prices will be always under control so yeah, I see yeah. India would also have a policy to import higher quantity of scrap if it is available at a cheaper price by yeah, reducing yeah. and make it make it come. See, you know, our basically supply chain cost has is very high. You know, mm-hmm. what you call the, sometimes people see uh, say if you want to buy steel and bring it to Mumbai port, it is cheaper from across the world. And from Mumbai port, if you want to bring it to the uh, to hinterland, suppose in Bhopal, it yeah, is costly. It is costly, absolutely. It is costly. So that so is a freight cost. We have to consci- consciously reduce our freight cost. Yes. And the DFT corridors, what we we are uh, into it, that will really help us in reducing our freight cost. Our main purpose should be reducing our freight cost. Hmm. Yeah, overall so, cost. As overall. When when we Red cost, our imported scrap prices will also go down. That's what yes. I see. Sure, sure. So, as you rightly mentioned, sir, uh, uh, Tata Steel or Sale, these integrated steel plants will have that mindset and that budget also to have scrapyard, their own scrapyard or yes. something like that. But the main yes. problem is of secondary steel uh, units where they don't have budget also and probably uh, I doubt whether they have the right mindset also. So there the role of uh, some organization like NIST will have a, a greater effect, you know, and yeah, to that. That extent, you are doing a great job 
of technologically educating the indian steel industry and how to showing them the future direction uh, actually uh, that is a great job sir and i thank you for uh, being with us uh, so it was a great conversation with you sir and thanks for being with us you showed us the uh, way how the indian industry should go ahead how to reduce the carbon footprint and uh, increase the use of hydrogen if possible in the future increase uh, reduce the cost of freight and all all cost related to the production and processing of steel thank you very much sir it was a very solid good conversation thank you thank, thank you for having me thank you thank, thank you sir you.